I have a clip to introduce, oh, yeah. a video clip from a BBC documentary that's never been shown in the United States. This is 1974, and it's about uh, something that you said inspired you to examine or to continue examining um, reawakenings in the brain. So let's look at the clip and then you tell us, you interpret what we're seeing. On his arrival, Sachs brought all the sleepy sickness patients together into one ward. Hello, Anne. Oh. How are you? Um, he started looking for mean? friends and relatives oh. who had lost touch, and he himself formed with them such relationships as he could. Okay, goodbye then, huh? Come on, everybody, move your fingers, move your fingers, out, up, back of your head, in front. Sachs noticed that although the patient seemed grossly physically disabled, for brief and surprising moments, they could rediscover their lost coordination. In 1967 came the first reports of a spectacular breakthrough. Using a new drug, L-Dopa, Dr. George Coetzeas had a resounding success in curing the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Coetzeas called L-Dopa the miracle drug of our age. For the first time in 40 years, there was hope. One knew that L-Dopa was useful in ordinary Parkinsonism of fairly mild degree and fairly short duration. Here, one saw people who had the profoundest disease uh, of the longest duration. Uh, could they be equally helped? Sachs decided to use L-Dopa, not so much in the expectation of miraculous success, but as a last resort. The condition of many of the patients, now in their 50s and 60s, was deteriorating rapidly. None more so than Lola, who was unable to swallow solid food and was threatened with starvation. She was first given L-Dopa in May 1969 in the hope of keeping her alive. It did much more than that. Lola had been, had been transfixed in a state of extreme, really in a state of infinite Parkinsonism and catatonia for decades. And her change awakening uh, occur, occurred in, in seconds and she jumped out of the chair and she flew down the passage and she burst into conversation and um, it was um, it was an incredible scene and I would doubt my own memory uh, were it not supported by everyone else's memory and of course by uh, um, by our accounts and films and so forth which which we took at the time summer months, the patients came back to life. Their childish gaiety and enthusiasm shattered the hospital routine. Um, so, tell us, can you pick out one of the patients or two of the patients and just tell us the trajectory and what actually happened? Explain it to us. Um, well, with... Um uh, the one whom the movie centered on, Leonard L., you see him briefly. He is the first one who, who returns a ball. Um, uh, he had been a teenager when he started to freeze up. Uh, originally, no diagnosis was made, um, but it was evident by his mid-twenties that it seemed that he had a, um, uh, an illness which was progressive and from which he would never recover, and he was put away in this chronic disease hospital. Um, he retained 
all his intelligence and, um, and was actually one of the first to hear about L-Dopa. In 1967, it was in the newspapers and uh, Leonard L, or uh, the man, he read about dopamine, the transmitter in the brain, and he called it resurrectamine. <laughs> and uh, uh, he, like a lot of the patients, started to wonder if the impossible could happen, if they could be resurrected. And uh, um, I keep wanting to give his real name, which is Ed. He's Leonard in the, in the book and the film. Uh -huh. But I can only think of him as Ed. Um, he, um, uh, he, he gloried in the effects to begin with and, and, and became um, exuberant and, and almost manic. And then ran into problems, as, as all the patients did. But the summer of 69 was a, a wonderful, lyrical sort of time for him and for all the others who, um, although uh, a perplexing time, because they were encountering, they had been out of the world sometimes for 30 or 40 years. Um, and uh, the, uh, the one, Sylvie, you see her, we would turn the ball rather yeah. like that. Um, she had had a very acute form of sleepy sickness in 1926 and um, basically had been frozen for 43 years. Are they frozen in their minds or can they actually hear what's going on? Um, Are they? Well, um, we wondered about that and um, when she became able to talk, I, I asked her you know, the date and things and she said, I know it's 69, but I feel it's 1926. She said that so far as she was concerned, nothing had happened in the intervening years. 